on the foreign scene. A mandatory two-week quarantine has begun for anyone arriving in Hong Kong from mainland China in a fresh move to curb the new coronavirus. This comes as another 41 people on a cruise ship off the coast of Japan test positive for the virus, bringing the total number of cases on board to 61. Here's Juliana Olayenka with more international stories in Around the World in 5. Good evening from the Channel's newsroom in London. A cruise ship suspected of carrying passengers who may have been infected with the deadly coronavirus has docked in New Jersey. The Royal Caribbean Anthem of the Seas contained dozens of sick Chinese nationals who have now been screened for signs of the virus. According to local reports, four were taken to a Newark hospital. Earlier in the week, the 12th confirmed case of coronavirus in America was confirmed in Wisconsin. More than 600 people have died from the virus worldwide. The majority of those deaths have been in mainland China. In Hong Kong, the makeshift memorial was created to remember the Chinese doctor, Li Wenliang, who died after contracting the virus while treating patients in Wuhan. Before his death, he had revealed he was one of eight people reprimanded by police for spreading rumors about the virus. The British government has appointed Karen Piz as its new ambassador to the United States. The highly experienced diplomat becomes the first woman to hold the U.S. post. Piers, 60, is currently the country's ambassador to the United Nations in New York and permanent representative at the UN Security Council. She replaces Kim Daroch, who resigned last July after US President Donald Trump labelled him wacky following the release of confidential memos in which he had branded the US president's administration inept. A funeral has been held for a Palestinian police officer who was allegedly killed by Israeli gunfire in the West Bank city of Jenin on Thursday during a surge of violence. Dozens turned out for Officer Tarek Badawan's funeral procession. Long simmering Palestinian unrest has been triggered following US President Donald Trump's Middle East peace plan, which was embraced by Israel and rejected by the Palestinians when it was announced last week. The United Nations Weather Agency has recorded a temperature on the Antarctic Peninsula that, if confirmed, could be the highest on record for the icy continent. A spokesperson for the organization said temperatures in the peninsula rose to 18.3 degrees Celsius. The average temperature in the region, which is an area of 14 million square kilometers, ranges from minus 10 degrees to minus 60 degrees Celsius. What we know is of great concern. Uh, the Antarctic Peninsula, so where we saw this uh, temperature record yesterday, um, it's the northwest tip near South America. It's among the fastest warming regions of the planet. We hear a lot about the Arctic, but you know this particular part of the Antarctic Peninsula is warming very quickly. Uh, over the past 50 years, it's warmed almost three degrees Celsius. Um, why does it matter? It matters a lot because of sea level rise. There's, there's two big glaciers. There's the Pine Island Glacier and the Thwaites Glacier. Once those, the melting from these, these glaciers, you know, means we're in big trouble when it comes to sea level rise. So we woke up this morning here in Antarctica with the headlines uh, that we've seen a record temperature at the Esperanza station here on the Antarctic Peninsula. And that's, of course, worryingly and, and deserves headlines. But what deserves even more headlines is, of course, the longer term trend of increasing temperatures and changes here in Antarctica. Heavy downpours have brought relief to wildfire ravaged parts of Australia, reducing the number of current blazes by a third. Authorities in New South Wales are said to be over the moon as rainfall has transformed fire-stricken areas and eased a drought that had crippled farmers across two states. Staying in Australia, residents from Ingham, North Queensland, are living in fear as hundreds of thousands of fruit bats have taken over their community. This terrifying footage has now been released, showing a black shroud of the critters swooping through the night sky. According to reports, many of the children at a nearby school are too terrified to return as a group of fruit bats have settled nearby. Bats are protected under Queensland state law, limiting the ways the local government can respond to the infestation. And finally, a spectacular nighttime display captured on film that never gets old. Oh my God! Northern lights were seen over the skies of Finland's Lapland region just before midnight. The show, 
colored the sky with green, pink, and white lights, forming quickly changing patterns. Spring is one of the best times to see the northern lights, also known as the aurora borealis, because of augmented solar wind activity taking place in the Arctic Circle that time of the year. And that's your international news around the world in five. Thanks, Juliana. Time for sports news. Here's Ayotunde Balogun. Many thanks, Amarachi and Nigeria have emerged overall winners of the 2020 Para Powerlifting World Cup, which ended today in Abuja. Team Nigeria finished top of the medal standing with 28 medals comprising 13 gold, 8 silver and 7 bronze, while Egypt and Brazil came second and a third. Nigeria Para Powerlifters were in cruise control from the opening day, but a late gold medal rush ensured the country pulled away from the other countries. All gold medalists have now booked their places at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games in August. The Nigeria Cricket Federation is still committed to their 2020 objective of developing the sport at the grassroots. The national under-19 team featured at the World Cup in South Africa and the Federation used the opportunity to make strategic partnerships which they believe will aid development. A Super Eagles forward Victor Osime has scored his 12th goal of the season in the French top flight, that's Ligue 1, as Lille beat Angers 2-0 in a matchday 24 clash played at the Stade Raymond Coppa. The 21-year-old gave Lille the lead on 14 minutes after receiving a pass from left winger Jonathan Bamba before Renato Sanchez made it 2 in the 75th minute. Pep Guardiola has urged Lionel Messi to stay on at Barcelona amid speculation that he could leave the cap now and reunite with his old boss at Manchester City Football Club. Despite speculation the Argentinian could be considering the cap now exit, his former boss wants him to remain with the only club he has played for professionally. And that's Sports News. I'm Ayotunde Balogun. Back to you, Marachi. Thanks, Ayotunde. And on entertainment news tonight, uh, Ramsey Noah living in, Ramsey Noah's living in bondage and Kemi Aditiba as King of Boys earn multiple nominees as the African Magic Viewers' Choice Awards roll out the 2020 nominees. Ekaiti Afia has details and other stories. Here are your trending entertainment stories. The seventh edition of the Africa Magic Viewers Choice Awards has released their full list of nominations. A few categories include Best Actor, Actress in a Comedy and in a Drama, Best Director, Best Documentary, among several others that give nods to creatives across the industry. Ramsey Noah leads nominations after having quite the busy year in the industry. Meanwhile, Iyaya has been arraigned before an Iboshere high court in Lagos for allegedly stealing a car. The police filed the one count charge against the Kukere singer in March 2019. Iyaya did plead not guilty and the judge adjourned the revisit to the trial later this month. Davy Doe made an appearance on Nick Cannon's sketch comedy show Wild and Out in Atlanta, Georgia for a second time within a year and showcased some popular Nigerian dance moves during a performance. And big news from the self-professed Black Diamond and former Mohits record golden boy, Wande Cole, as he confirms that he would be dropping a full body of work very soon. The bumper-to-bumper -bumper singer, who all of a sudden got active in recent moments, following years of hibernation, responded to a plea for a new album from a fan with confirmation of a date March 6th. This will be his first full body of work in six years. Well, that's a wrap for tonight. I'm Akaita Afia, and the News at 10 will return shortly. Thanks, Akaite. And the main news again. The Supreme Court today affirmed the judgment of the Court of Appeal sentencing former governor of Taraba State, Jolie Yame, to 12 years in prison for breach of trust and misappropriation of public funds. Also today, President Mamadou Buhari arrived in Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia, to attend the 33rd ordinary session of heads of state and government of the Africa Union. It was received by the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Mr. Abiy Ahmed, Nigeria's ambassador to the North African country, Ambassador Bankole Adeoye, among others. And more people on a cruise ship off the coast of Japan tested positive to the new coronavirus as another cruise ship carrying passengers suspected to have been infected with the virus docked in New Jersey, United States. That is the news at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.